Okay, ladies and germs, so we are going to try and play a bigger game to demonstrate how to play. Got all my stuff ready. This is a game made up scenario um, and it's called Supplies. And these guys outlined in green are the British. I've assigned them different um, um, weapons. There's 25 pounders, there's a couple mortars, there's a Vickers machine gun. I'm introducing um, indirect fire we're going to try. So indirect fire meaning either offboard indirect fire from artillery that I've randomly chosen based on some things in the book. So they've got a 75 millimeter, a 25 pounder, and a 155 millimeter howitzer off board, and we'll talk about that in a second. The Germans are down here. Um, they've got machine gun. They've got a couple of artillery pieces. They got an 88, which is a really wicked, nasty, amazing gun. And they've got 250 millimeter howitzers off board, and they got 105 um, howitzer off board. Okay. Um, the game is called Supplies because what I've done is, or what I've noticed in this game is, you sort of get to the point a lot of times where all you're doing is hammering away at each other from close range and you just keep firing back and forth. If there's a reason to move or a reason to take a piece of material position, then you actually move and you take risks and all this. So what I've done is I've taken these weapons pits. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Um, I think under three of them, maybe, I think it's three, uh, my wife put down an E underneath the counter. And so I've randomly put these out there. I don't know where the E's are. The goal of the game is going to be to get the British over here, the Germans over here, to occupy these positions. Because in those weapons pits are supplies, weapons, ammunition, food, water, that kind of thing. So they're going to get points. In addition to getting points for knocking off particular components, they're going to get points for occupying those. The caveat is at the end, you could have wasted and a bunch of your guys have been killed and vehicles have been destroyed and all this kind of stuff. And at the end of the game, when you turn this over, if it says E, it means it was empty. And it means you get no points for it. So it's kind of an interesting little dynamic of, uh-oh, what, what am I doing here? Each of these guys I've set up, I've got tanks over here on both sides. I've got a couple of British tanks that can be onboard artillery. I got a couple German tanks that can be onboard artillery. Um, those are um, the Panzer 4E can be onboard artillery, indirect. Uh, they've got two of those. The British have these Crusader CSs, which uh, um, fire fragmentation, and they can be um, onboard artillery. And we'll talk about those in a second. The Germans also have a gun. I forget where I've put it. It's under one of these things. Um, LIG, it's called, and it is able to be onboard artillery. I've also got the British have two mortars. And the mortars can be used as onboard artillery as well, essentially. Indirect fire, essentially, is all that stuff is. So that's the setup. In terms of what you see on either side, I've stacked things. <coughs> what I've done is made sure that um, a couple places, like I've got some um, infantry that are just out in the open, but most of the infantry are associated with a light truck. And with these light trucks, I've made sure that they have a weapon that they're towing. So that's another thing we're introducing is towing. So they're towing a weapon. They've got infantry with them because infantry only moves two at a time. It'll take them 17 years to get through up to, up to here. And uh, so anyway, that's sort of the, 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 the gist of this. Um, in order to occupy these, they either got to be in the weapon pit or on one of the squares around it or one of the hexes around it. That's going to be my rule for occupation of that control of that weapons pit. The other thing is it has to be a functional you know, uh, weapon. It can't be like a blown up tank. It doesn't count. You have to have either live crew in there. you got to have a, a, a live artillery piece. Uh, at minimum, you need live crew in there. So it has to be. So if you have a, bro a, a smashed tank here, it doesn't count. You have to occupy it with either 
crew or a gun or something or a live tank nearby or in the pit. Okay, that's kind of the how you're going to occupy. So each of these is set up that way. And I'm going to play it the same way um, we did the last time, which is um, going through initiative, etc., etc. Now, artillery. Let's talk about artillery for just a brief second. In this game, you have offboard artillery, and what it does is allows you to, after one, two, three, four turns, on the fourth turn, I put ART on it here. That's the point where you can shoot artillery. Okay. Now, artillery is one of those guns that I mentioned, and artillery of that sort has um, um, a certain amount of... of uh, Fragmentation factors associated with it. Notice this is an offboard artillery direct hit and fragmentation table. Each time you do artillery, you roll, and this is the specific artillery you have. You roll the dice to see if you got a direct hit. If you got a direct hit, there's another table that talks about um, you know what that means, what a direct hit means. Generally speaking, you don't get a direct hit. You see most of these are you get a two, um, which which isn't isn't easy because uh, you're rolling two die, so getting a snake eyes, basically. But what you do have are fragmentation factors, which rain down on whatever you're shooting at, um, regardless of if you get a direct hit or not. So on that fourth game turn, if you have a 25-pounder, you get 46 fragmentation points on that hex that you're looking at. Okay? So you've got to say what, hex, what, what thing you're going to actually attack with that and keep it there. You also can keep attacking whatever that is if it only moves two or less hexes. So in other words, you can't have artillery placed on a truck that's moving five because it's going to move too many hexes. You can't keep track of it. So this is really only useful for either very slow tanks or um, infantry, really, or a, a prepared position that's stationary. Having said that, um, when you look in this little table that has to do with um, off-board um, artillery, you can see that here's the target that you're shooting at. Direct hit does things, so if you get one of those twos, you reduce the personnel cover, um, cover state, which is great, then you roll for fragmentation. If you get a direct hit on a weapon, you F kill it, meaning it can't fire anymore. It, AFV, you K kill. Okay, so if you hit a, you actually destroy the tank if you get a direct hit. Other vehicles, you kill completely. So a direct hit is awesome if you can get it. But what you do is, even if you miss this, you then come over here to fragmentation and you basically use what you're doing off of those tables like we do with the artillery, with the uh, infantry. So roll on the casualty table, makes sense. Weapons and AF, AF, AFVs have no effect because fragmentation doesn't hurt them. They're completely armored, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, little vehicles, there's another chart that talks about other vehicles that aren't AFVs. Okay, so this little table we're going to use to see what that, what that does. Okay. Now, it sounds like a lot of junk going on, but it isn't really as bad as it sounds. So what we're going to do is start and see who gets the uh, initiative. Remember, turn one, um, one to three is British, got a two. So the British get the initiative, so they get to move first. Now their goal, of course, is to move. And so they're trying to get to these weapons pits. Okay, Let's just make sure they're even, kind of make sure we got the same amount of weapons pits on either side or kind of in the middle. So we don't have anybody have a huge advantage one way or the other. Let's see this one over here, this one here. So everybody's got one slightly over on their side, and the rest are kind of in the middle. Okay, so we can kind of be even. All right, so we're going to start. Um, the British get the move, so the British get to move first. I'm going to start basically choosing one of these with one of these groups. I'm going to move him. He's a truck. He's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm going to move my crusader. One, two, three, four. And move this truck. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to move this Matilda. It's top speed, which is two. One, two. 
I'm going to move this infantry and this infantry along with that tank. They're going to assault move one, two. They're going to move along with it, but they're on the open. Um, here's a carrier that has a gun. It can move four. It goes one, two, three, four. Crusader. Um, uh, the Crusader CSs, they are onboard artillery. They, if they move only one hex, they can use their onboard artillery to attack something and they don't have to wait till the fourth turn. They could actually only move one and say, okay, we're going to fire our onboard artillery. Now, one thing I got to check is, what is the range of a Crusader? The range of the Panzers on the German side is unlimited, which is kind of weird, I think, but it is. Crusaders, 27 hexes. So they could be onboard artillery, 27 hexes. So here he is. So what is 27 hexes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 27, 28, 29, 20. So it's right about here. So he can't hit anything except for like if they move the set next turn. He's going to go ahead and move four. One, two, three, four. He doesn't move, it, well, move them all together. This light truck's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. This unit is going to be out in the open. He's going to move two assault. Grant tanks, a big old tank. Now, it's, it's uh, a field of fire because it has a weird situation. Is dead ahead and that direction. It can't move this way. So it's going to has to make sure that it is basically on this side of the map because then it can hit stuff over here. But if it goes way over here, it can only hit things dead ahead. So it's going to move its three. One, two, three. Squad's going to move four. One, two, three, four. This truck's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. Stuart, little speedster. One, two, three, four, five. And the Crusader CS is going to move again. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, now that's movement. Okay, for the British. I'm not going to put any movement things on there. I'm not going to bother putting on any um, uh, mark it up quite yet, just because the uh, we know they're all moving in this case. And no one's doing any shooting. The first shooting we're going to be able to do will probably be the offboard artillery, um, which you know probably will will make the most sense. Um, now, a word about that offboard artillery and um, what these things are going to try to cite. The onboard artillery here, the CSs and the Panzers over here, are not going to cite anything yet. They can fire, if they move one hex only, they can fire in the same turn. Okay? Unlike everything else, usually when you move, you can't fire. The artillery, as we said, you have to cite on something, so basically say what you're aiming at. And it has to only move two hexes, and then on the fourth turn, you can apply that fire for effect. Okay, with one little caveat that I'm going to show you. So let's take a moment to figure out what targets we want these guys to aim at. So the British have three offboard artillery pieces. Okay, what do they want to aim at? Um, let's say, well, first let's look and see how much. Let's see, 100, or 75 millimeter has 65 fragmentation. That's a lot. So that'd be good against some kind of arc, some kind of unit that is out in the open, some kind of, of um, 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 infantry unit. So this infantry unit is way the heck out in the open. And he's not riding in a truck or anything. Uh, he's, he, he's, he's, um, and he's going to move slow. So he's going to be the target. So. Um, our, uh, he's going to be 2-2 for the 75-pounder. 2-2. Okay, he's the target. 25-pounder gets 46, which is nice. Um, and 155 gets 37. <coughs> so <coughs> this one wants to be against something that's moving slow. What's moving slow? Um... Really, there's nothing, because the only thing that's moving slow, yeah, there's nothing else they can aim at. 
really. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to apply, well, let's let's take a chance. Let's try to get rid of their artillery, because if they get a direct hit on an AFV, they destroy it too. So let's say this guy is going to go against a Panzer 4E number two, because that would get rid of their onboard artillery. And we'll say this one's going to go across, go against Panzer 4E. Um, where is he? There's a second one. Number one. <coughs> so that's what my artillery is going to shoot at. Um, <coughs> because the Panzers aren't going to move three. They're going to move two or one in order to do there. In fact, I'll move them one each time just because I want to I want to make sure they can shoot on the same turn. So let's say that happens. <coughs> the Germans, let's see, 105 howitzer, um, 57. So that'd be great to take out some, art some infantry. They are going to shoot at this 2-2 two -two over here. And <coughs> the other one, there's two 150s. One of them is going to shoot at 1-2. And let's see. The other will shoot at the um, HQ here. Um, the other one will shoot at the HQ. So we've chosen our targets. So we know what they're going to shoot at when it's time. Okay? Now, British have moved. Germans turn to move. They're kind of in the same situation. Although, because these panzers can be onboard artillery all the time across the whole board, they're only going to move one. I'm only going to move them one move, these two guys, because that way I can, use, I can fire with them when it comes to the fire phase. So I'm going to already put an F on these, because that way... I know they're ready to fire. Nothing else can fire. <clears throat> this artillery is, or this infantry is going to go one, two. Um, truck is going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. This panzer is going to go three. One, two, three. This truck's going to go four. One, two, three, four. This little panzer is going to go three, one, two, three. One, one two, three, one, one, like that. Truck's going to go five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Truck's going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. And the panzer four is going to stay still. He's going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, th three, four, five. And my three H is going to move three. One, two, three. So again, I'm not going to bother putting anything movements down because everybody's moved their maximum, including the infantry. So the only thing I'm going to be able to do now is potentially fire something. So. British had the initiative, they moved. Now, indirect fire off board, we can't do that yet. We can't do that till this turn. Indirect fire on board, however, right now the only people who can are the Germans because they have those two tanks that can fire um, and use their onboard artillery to, or use their, that capacity to fire. And they can fire anywhere on the board. And they don't need to... Um, by the rules, they don't need to wait for far, four turns or whatever it is. They can fire immediately. So, what are they? And they've moved only one space, so they can fire they, as, our, as indirect artillery. So now, what happens with them is we're going to basically rain down on something we want to do. Let's find out how much the Panzer Four E has in. Uh, fragmentation. Panzer IV E fragmentation is 24, and they get one shot initially. So it's going to be 24 and 24. I combine them and get 48 on somebody. So who do I want to hit? I'm going to say 
<clears throat> 48 on this guy, one, two, because, because why not? Um, one, two, HQ, yeah, why not? He's gonna fire, they're gonna, they're gonna combine their fire and fire at this guy. Now, that's all hunky-dory. What I don't like about, that means you would just, as the rules go in the book, in the rules book, you would just apply 48 factors against this guy because they're gonna hit him, okay? And they're out in the open, they were assault, they'll be creamed. I, what I don't like about that is almost all other guns, you gotta check and see if it even came close, if you hit, you know, something like that. So what I'm gonna do, I've changed the rules a little bit. I say indirect fire, except for mortars. One to four, you hit them. Five to six, you miss with no effect. So the idea is you roll a die and you see if you even can apply those fragmentation factors because otherwise it's just, it's just, they decimate things. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this. I got a one. A one means you hit them, okay? So after all that, this group is gonna get 48 fragmentations against it, okay? 48 fragmentations puts them in this column. They were moving in assault, so that's here. And whatever we get, we got to multiply by two. So we roll our dice. Oh man, they got a five. So they get eight points, eight, eight casualties in that group already. So first blood is drawn. They get eight casualties in the one, two. These guys, eight casualties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Their morale now, as you can see, is down to five. So they have to roll and see what they get for morale. Um, they have to get, if they get above a five, they're broken. They got an eight. So they are, well, wait a second now. They are within two of a friendly, fully functional tank. That gives them, I think, two extra points for morale. In other words, morale is modified. If you are, for each HQ, for each non-killed, um, non-bailed AFE, add two. So they got to get a seven because they were on five, right? Their morale right now the morale is five. So now because they are within two of a two of a functional tank, they get two added to that. So they get seven. The problem is they got an eight when I rolled. So they are broken, they are gone. So first first um, and that's that's how wicked artillery can be, okay? So there you go. But that's the only firing that can be done. I erase the firing from these because they're done. And <clears throat> the British can't, there's no direct fire involved. Uh, nothing like that's happening. Um, nothing at all. All right, so time to move. Who gets the initiative to move on turn two? So we're done with turn one already because you can't do direct fire. Turn two, who gets to move? the British again. So the British get to move. What are they going to do? Well, Stuart is going to move, well, let's go up from the top here. They're still going to move their five. So one, two, three, four, five. Now they've got stuff under here like mortars. they got a mortar in there they can start to use pretty soon. So we're going to see what we can do with that. Crusader is going to move four. One, two, three, four. This truck that has a mortar with it is going to go one, two, three, four, five. Matilda's going to go two. These guys are going to go two. The carrier is going to go four. And destroy the whole desert. One, two, three, four. These guys move up to here. Next to him. Crusader goes four, one, 
two, three, four. This truck goes five. One, two, three, four, five. The grant goes one, two, three. The quad goes four. One, two, three, four. Come on, quad, get on there. Don't mess with me. Stuart cruises at five. One, two, three, four, five. Truck goes five. One, two, three, four, five. Crusader goes two. No, one. One, because he's going to hope that he is close to that. And the same with this Crusader. He's going to go only one because he might be close enough. They might be close enough to, to focus their attack on something. So that would be awesome if they could do that. Okay. Now, uh, so they moved. There's no shooting involved. Um, but the Crusader can fire the CSs if they're within range. So I'm putting an F on there and see if they get within range. Don't know. It depends on what the Germans actually end up doing. Nothing. Everything else is moved. Nothing else can fire. Joinments. They get to move. So the Panzer E moves one, so we can have artillery again. These guys move two. This thing moves one, two, three. This moves one, two, three, four, five. This moves one, two, three, four. This thing moves one, two, three. This thing moves five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, this guy moves one, two, three, four, five. This guy moves one, two, three, four, five. This guy moves one, so he can fire when it comes time at something. Um, and he moves five. One, two, three, four, five. And this guy moves one, two, three. Everybody's moved completely. No one can do anything. Now, you know, that's, now we got to start thinking about deploying what these people have. Like, you know, this guy has an MG34. Okay. Do you want to deploy? Do you want to get to here and deploy him in the pit? Do you want to deploy him someplace else? This guy over here is the only one of only two vehicles that can carry eh, eh, that bad boy, the 88. The 88 has a range basically all over the hex, all over the thing, and it's a wicked gun. Super accurate, super nasty, and deadly. So it can. Um, it can basically get someplace in the center of the board, and it can just pick stuff off willy-nilly. It can already pick off stuff here. So you know what I'm going to do? <coughs> I'm going to unload. It's moved, so it can't do that. So we'll do the next turn. I'll tell you about that in a second. So anyway, that was movement. Okay. Now we get to go to indirect fire. Let's see if they are within 27 of these Crusaders. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. So they are within that range. Okay, Can't really do much because it can't attack any of those because they were all moving too fast. It can only attack... It can only attack that because that's the, that's the only thing that's wide open. And that's way too far away. How far is it from this Crusader CS? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So he is within range. And he moved assault. Okay? So this Crusader, this Crusader can't fire because he's too far away from everything. Because the only thing they can fire on the British, sadly, the only thing moving slow enough is this infantry unit back here. So, um, that's what's going to happen there. The Germans will see. But who gets to fire? Let's find out who gets to get indirect fire. 
the British, they're just, you know, those darn British, they're just lucky as can be. So, they get to fire first. So, indirect onboard firing is going to be from that Crusader against that unit way the heck back there. Okay? Crusader has Crusader CS. I'm dealing with nine. And it only fires once. Well, that's lame. I guess it can check and see if it gets a direct hit. Right? So, um, um, well, actually, wait, do they even get direct hits if they're an onboard, if they're a tank? Let's see. It says direct hits for these vehicles. Indirect fire, AFV, indirect fire. Similar to mortar fire. Indirect fire is executed the same indirect fire phase as combat segment after blah, blah, blah. Indirect fire and AFV is executed exactly the same way as direct fire, except that only HE or smoke will be fired. Hits are not rolled for. Fabric fires are simply applied to the target as initial or required rate of fire. Unlike other types of indirect fire, there is no target acquisition delay. Fabric factors are effective the first time they're fired. Okay. Well, that means that there is no thing about does it hit or not, although I like throwing that in there, um, which I will. I'm going to use my Smith rule here. I'm going to make sure. Got a one, so he gets to shoot, but it's only fragmentation of nine. Um, fragmentation of nine is super lame. Fragmentation of nine is basically in, in assault. He, he we roll, he might get, say, if he gets a five or six, he'll get two off. So he's got to hope for a five or a six. So he does this, he gets a five. So a five gets a one, but they're in assault because they're out in the open, so he gets a two. So that group gets two off. So, you know, it's chipping away. That's two, two. The German unit that is two, two. So we come over here to Joymans. Say 2-2, two, two, and he gets two hits. Boom, boom. His morale is 11. Um, may as well roll. What if he gets a 12? Then he'd be out of the game. He didn't. He got a 5. Okay, so. But you knock down a couple of his guys, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so now the, no, so the British fired. Once they get more, um, you know, now he's acquired him, he'll be able to fire three times and get 27 on him. So that's, that's going to be a little more damaging, I think. So that was the British indirect fire. Now it's the Germans' indirect fire turn. <clears throat> what are they going to shoot at? Well, they shot at... They combined their fire and destroyed that one unit. They are going to, just for sake of argument, they are going to try... What is the most important truck... There's a six pounder. There's a 25 pounder. That's an important gun. They're going to apply all their stuff onto that quad. Okay? So that means. <coughs> that means, first off, do they make a direct hit? Um, well, first off, do they, do they both do it with my rule? Um, do they get a one to a four? They got a six. One of them got a six. The other one, he got a one. So one of them gets the hit. So it's only going to be um, 24 fragmentations. Now, <clears throat> I have to roll and see if I get a direct hit, because a direct hit um, would cause problems. And got a five, and a direct hit <coughs> for on board um, artillery um, would do would do a lot of damage um, but a direct hit oh but that's for the off that's for them that's right there is nothing so you just put the things on there so it's just 24 it's just 24 against the British and 24 against a quad that's fragmentation okay now, you have to check and see what a quad will um, be affected by, if it will be affected by 
um, fragmentation. So you go to direct hit results for non-AFVs. There's a fragmentation things here. So fragmentation gunfire factors. Um, it's I was shooting at a quad, which is here. So I have to look and see. 24, nothing happens. Okay, nothing happens to it. It's too. It doesn't do anything. So you know that's just that's sort of the way it goes. So nothing happened, but it was worth a shot. Okay, that's just to show you kind of how those how those work and how a direct. If we had if we had made a um, well, the off board would have been for the direct. This was just throwing the things at him, and uh, nothing happened. Okay, so they fired. One of them, based on my new rule, didn't get all the fire effects on there, but one of them did. Okay. All right, so that is the end of turn two, because direct fire, again, they're all too far to really use direct fire. So now we go into game, on to um, turn three, and we see who gets the initiative. British again. We just get the initiative for turn three, and the next turn they're going to get the fire. They're indirect, which is cool. So what are they going to do? <clears throat> um, let's see. They're going to, they want to get closer to these pits before they unload their equipment. Crusader CS is going to move two because or four because he um, is too far away from anything to make any damage. So. One, two, three, four. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's the steward. He's going to go, well, maybe the steward's going to wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. He's eighteen. Wait, they're going to move. He's going to stay still. He's going to fire. That's somebody. The Grant is going to move one, two, three. I'm going to put a move on him so that I know he did move. The Quad's going to move four. One, two, three, four. Four. Right there. This truck's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. Crusader CS is going to move one, two, three, four. So we can get closer to whatever he can shoot at. So he's moved. Carrier's going to move four. One, two, three, four. Let's try to get over to here. This truck is going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's getting really close. Crusader is going to move four. One, two, three, four. This truck's going to move five. One, two, th two, three, four, five. He's getting close. And this guy's going to move one, two. He's moved, so he can't fire. And these guys are going to move one, two, along with him. Okay, so that's the British, the British move. Um, he moved as well, right? The Crusader moved. Yep, he moved. So the only thing, so the British have all moved. Now, <clears throat> Germans get to move. The Panzers. 4E are going to move 1, and he's going to move 1. He's going to move 3, 1, 2, 3. Put a move on him so he can't fire. This truck is going to go 1, 2, 3, or 5. This truck is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five is almost where you can deploy. This guy <coughs> is going to go one, two, three. So you can fire. This truck is going to go. Oh boy! Whoa! Calm down, truck. Jeez, don't don't unload yet. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's getting close. This truck's going to go one, two, three, four, five. 
this truck's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This Panzer here is going to move 1 so it can fire. One at a time. And this guy is going to go <coughs> 1, 2, 3, so he's moved. Now, one thing we do additionally is I did not move this guy on purpose. He's got a massively cool gun. He's going to unload. To unload a weapon, it takes a full move. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take that crew and take that 88, and I'm going to spend this turn unloading them. And I'm just going to say unload, okay? So they are being, it's, it's being unloaded. And that means that crew is going to be able to fire that in the next phase. Can't fire it right now, but the next turn it can fire. And that gun has 360, and it covers basically everything. So that's going to be a real wicked, neat battle setting up there, okay? So that is that. We are on turn three, so there's no offboard artillery yet. But there is indirect fire um, based on um, um, this. Uh, let's see, but the, both, both Crusaders moved, so the British can't have it. But both of my Panzers didn't. So my Panzers are going to, again, combine fire. Um, what do they get? Okay, so they, they don't shoot, they doesn't, it doesn't work, so that, doesn't, that didn't work for them. Because I rolled that thing, that my own rule, that says you have to get a certain thing in order to rain down terror. Because they were going to shoot at like, these guys and just cream them. But they can't, because their stuff didn't get there, their artillery didn't play great. So I, I kind of like that rule, otherwise it's just too much. I mean, that's again, that's a my rule, that's, not a, that's a house rule, that's not... Not that useful. Now, <clears throat> I put the M's here so that they can't move because now we're on direct fire. So no one in the Germans can do direct fire at this point. The only ones that can do direct fire are the British. And the only one that can fire directly is the Stuart. And the Stuart is going to use his 37 millimeter and it's going to fire. Let's see. If it hits a truck, it, des it destroys it. So let's see. Um, that's a pack 280. That's that thing that can do long-range artillery. This is a, a more dangerous target. We're going to aim at that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's 13 away. So let's see what that does for us. He's 13 away with a steward. He has to get eight or better. It's moving, so nine or better. Uh, medium truck doesn't do anything for changing. So it's, yeah, so it's it, for changing the size. You can you can still you can still hit it. So nine or better, and he gets two chances to do it. If he hits it, it's hit. Okay, nine or better. Here we go. Two, <laughs> one more shot, gets a nine. So this truck is a wreck, okay? So that truck is a wreck. Now, remember in the rules it says that that means this weapon is basically destroyed and the crew is destroyed, everybody's dead. I don't, I don't like that rule because to me the truck got hit and I'm thinking maybe these guys are okay. So what I do is I go back and I look and see. This is unit 4-2. I come back here and I do a morale check. I look at 4-2. <clears throat> Where are we? 4-2. Um, well, that's wrong. They haven't been shot at yet, have they? Or were they? Okay, I guess they were. Yes, they were. Um, so I say, um, here's their morale check, one, two, three, four. So right now they're at seven for intents and purposes of what this is talking about. They're at seven. So they have to do a morale check and see what happens. If they get um, over seven, they're broken. 
they got a five, they're fine. Okay, so they are they're okay. But I figure that way, um, I mean that makes it more fair. Okay, now they got the seventy-five millimeter. They can't get any closer now, but um, the crew is there. They'll be able to set up shop, and this is actually a pretty important piece. Um, the problem is they got to unload like. This guy's unloading. They got to take a turn to do it, so they can't do anything yet. So that was the first um, shooting, and that was awesome for the steward. All right. Now, next turn, no one can do anything right now. I mean, everything's everything's over because um, there's no direct fire by the by the Germans. Um, and there's no. Um, there's no direct fire, there's no, no more indirect fire. The Germans did their indirect fire um, and they missed. Um, we're on turn four. 